Uh, today is Friday. It's about five till six. I thought uh, today I would show you two uh, tricks in Ableton and three tricks in Reason. Now I'm using Ableton 8.3.2 and I'm using Reason 6.5.3. So uh, right off the bat, I think I'll get to it. So ever heard of feedback when using a compressor? Probably not. So I think I'll just grab a random loop. Let's see. This is Ableton Pack. And I think I'll drag it. Oh man, I can't see the extracting group. No, I don't want to do that. But anyways, um oh yeah, I should also mention that when you what is it? Ah, never mind. I'll save it towards the end. Okay, so now that we have our loop, I'll turn this down. Change the cue. We have our basic compressor. Let me turn off the second one. And a compressor compresses all the space in between the notes and makes them louder. Now, down here you'll see, turn this off, down here you'll see there's an F1, F2, and FB. Now, unfortunately, I think, yeah, it just describes uh, what the models do. However, if you use feedback, i turn that on with the second one, you can start to see your feedback come in through the second compressor. And luckily, we don't see any gain reduction so we know our levels are great. This is really good for trying to check if your levels are good even when you have your volume down. Make sure there's like no feedback. In order to eliminate feedback, you would have to use an EQ and I guess I'll show you guys that next time. Okay, so now that we got our tip one down, it's time to go on to tip two. Okay, so in this t uh, second tip, I want to show you why it's important to use Redux when using a very cra crazy waveform on an EQ. Um, actually, that's not part of this. <laughs> Never mind. Um, the Redux, that hard note, that 24, really responds to the resonance when you have a simpler patch. So. I'll demonstrate that by holding down the key. See if we turn off the redux, we lose our growl. And I'm actually doing this for a project. So it's very crucial when you have the right redux. 24, um, actually 12 is a higher pitch and the more you go, 12 is actually the octave for a much higher yaw sound, as you can hear. And 24 goes down lower, 36, 48, you name it, goes down even lower. However, I found the perfect sweet spot is actually 32 for a nice lower growl. So that's actually pretty cool. I'll see you in reason for tip number three. Okay, so uh, one of the tips I wanted to show you is creating a line 6 bass amp. Although I'm not going to be using anything on the bass amp except for the probably the volume knob and the compressor. The compressor is actually a linear compressor, much to use in a lot of old analog. So it's a great way to uh, keep your tracks down 
and with something that's a little bit softer than the hard compressor you get in the studio effects. This is without it. Swift. It compresses everything very nicely, and I think I'll save that. It's actually pretty cool. Okay, I'll see you in for tip number four, and another tip after that, and then that's it. Okay, so now we're in tip number four, and I wanted to show you the digital vocoder EQ. Now, usually when you spawn in a spawn, usually when you create a vocoder, you have the options of going to 4 to 32 or 512 bands and using equalizer or, vo or vocoder. I choose equalizer mode simply because it drags all your outs, sends them into four modulation levels instead of like 512 or like 32. This gives it uh, a slightly easier control and I haven't messed with any of the modulation levels at all. What I did is turned up the shift uh, three quarters and you get a nice richer effect because you're squashing the levels to these four parameters when the oscillator that's running out goes into a million different bands. So you're squashing it down to these four bands that have a little bit more characteristic and so you're forcing all the sound into the lows, the mid lows, the mids, the mid highs and the highs. And when you turn up the shift you start to get a nice crispier because you're turning up uh, a little bit, you're allowing more flow into each band whether it's positive or negative. So has a, have a listen to with it on and with it off. Let me play some lower. See, it gives it a nice grittiness. So, I'm actually going to, okay, so for tip number five, and then I'll explain what the rest I'm doing. See you in a second. Alright, so for the last tip, I'm going to show you how important it is to use a Scream 4 Distortion CV out in with your, um, what is that damn thing called? An arpeggiator. Thank you. Thank you, mind. Anyways, it's important to use a Scream 4 distortion, and it's actually one of my unique tips. It creates, uh, what happens is that it takes all the signal from the Scream 4 distortion, routes it into an arpeggiator, and whatever the arpeggiator is modulating goes back into the synth in and out. So with this synth, it's actually a preset. It's just called uh, whatever the fuck that is called. Percutron, I think. I'm not sure. Anyways, it takes all the signal, and I usually choose a lot of dirty, old, or low-sounding signal. And what happens when I figure it out is it pitches it up. <laughs> it pitches it up when it goes in the arpeggiator and then out. Um, so I'm going to turn it off. Actually bypass and then on and show you the differences. So have a listen. So it's very different. Um, and that's basically all the 
tips and tricks I have to show you guys. I will be doing for the next Friday, I will be either deconstructing a song for you, and I'm actually going to show you a little bit of that. I'm trying to deconstruct one of my... Can you f fucking quit already? God, it takes like a billion years for certain programs to close down, and I don't fucking know why. Anyways, uh, I just thought I should let you guys know that when trying to deconstruct a song, there's a lot of parts that go into it. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be, as not acetoning it, but I'm going to be, that's actually an element that doesn't make sense. I'm going to be deconstructing it by ear, meaning uh, what other people do to deconstruct it is they have the song, they have in many different parts, that's cool and all, but how do you take an original song, like Still Getting It with Foreign Beggars and Skrillex, and you try and decompose something like this that's already pre-made, how do you take a waveform and the de deconstruct it. Well, I'm going to try and do that with this song. And so far, I've gone pretty good. Uh, what happens here, I've gone to the breakdown, and it there's this growl part that goes, and then there's a snare hit. After that, it goes, and it goes back up. There's a high pitch um, chord step. I can't play it, otherwise I'll get sued. And then there's a 16 loop, 16 bit loop that goes on and on. So have a listen to this and I'll see you guys Monday. I'm gonna play you out here.